moving on to our next section, uh, I am going to talk a little bit about what type of looping variables you can use. I'm just going to delete what we had from the previous one. Looping uh, is also called iteration or repeating. So if you hear me say iteration or it needs to iterate, that just means it needs to loop. And looping is just doing things over and over again. A program is not really that useful if it can only do something once, but if it can continue doing it over and over again, you can save a lot of person hours in whatever it is you're trying to do. So all the looping uh, are in the control section. I just started out with the basic when the green flag is clicked, let's send scratch to the middle of the page. Um, I did have a variable for my prior program, but I'll just, I'll just get rid of that for now. And all of our looping is in the control function. So our looping, our looping has some options. You can either repeat something a certain number of, number of times. You can repeat something forever, okay? You can repeat until something happens. So those are the main looping options. And I'll give you an example of this. Okay, so let's use a repeat 10. Okay, I'm gonna move Scratch actually a little bit more to the, uh, to the left side of the screen as he starts. So I'm gonna maybe put negative 200 in there. See where that starts, and maybe 180. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so Scratch is going to go to the this side of the screen, and what I'm going to have him repeat 10 times is I'm going to have him, um, maybe I'll move, and then wait 10 times. So that's part of motion. Let's have Scratch move 10 steps, and we'll have him do that 10 times. So he'll use, you know, he'll move 10 steps, and then in loop, and he'll do 10 more. So really, he'll be doing 100 steps. What happens when Scratch, okay, that's 100 steps. It just happened really, really quickly, so we didn't notice it. Uh, maybe I'll change it to 20 steps so he moves a little further, but he's still not going to go all the way across the screen. Let's make it 40. That should be getting us close. All right, I'm going to make it 35. Okay, so Scratch is moving 35 steps at a time, and he's doing that 10 times. It's hard to tell that he's doing that, so I'm just going to put in one more block that's called a wait block, and that should be in... Should be right here in events again. Let's see where it says wait one second. I'll have Scratch, I think 0.2 seconds is the least he can wait. Maybe it's 0.1. I'll have Scratch move 35 steps. He kind of does it all at once. And then he's going to wait. So he'll pause on the screen. And then he'll do the next one. And then the next one. And the next one. So hopefully you can see the 10 blocks of moving as he uh, as he moves across the screen. All right, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There you go. So he's moving 35 steps each time, but he's repeating it 10 times to get from here to here. Because if we only run this program once without the loop, this is what it looks like. That's it. And it happens so quickly, that's all that happens. Whoop. Moves 35 steps. Start at zero, move 35 steps. That's it. So it happens instantaneously. Um, that's what the repeat 10 does. Well, we could do something very similar um, with a repeat until. Okay, so we could repeat until, and we already kind of did this one on the last time, repeat until something, right? So there's got to be some operators and conditions. Uh, let's uh, repeat until. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Okay, let's just do what we did last time. Uh, is greater than 10. 11. Sorry, I should use an equals block here. That would make more sense. Equals block. Okay, so let's just, uh, until we'll set our variable. Um, I've still got this number variable hanging around, so maybe I'll just use this one. At the beginning of my program, I'll set number to zero, and then we'll repeat until number hits 10. And what we're going to do is we're going to move 35 steps, and then every time we move 35 steps, we're going to add one Okay, we're going to add one to number. So when number hits 10, okay, actually, we learned this from last time, it needs to be 11. When number hits 11, he will have done this thing 10 times. So really, Scratch should start and end up in the same spot as he did with our last program. It was just a slightly different way to do it because we added a little logic in with our loop, right? We had, this is the logic part, right? Yeah, repeat until what, until what? The logic part is number equals 11. Whereas here, it kind of builds that in for you, right? Repeat it 10 times. If you know how many times to repeat it, why not use this? It's super easy. If you don't know how many times it needs to repeat, maybe you need some input from the user or something, you're going to have to put some logic in there. Uh, but the result should be the same. So he's going to move across the screen. There he goes. He's done. It starts at negative 180, zero. Does the same thing he did with this repeat loop 
It just looks a little different, right? Okay, so now the other one. What about forever? Okay, well, forever, move 35 steps and wait two seconds. I don't need the variable this time because I'm not using it, so I'll just get rid of that. Okay. Remember, all this stuff that's not connected is, is just not impacting anything. The only things that are connected are, are impacting it. So if, if he goes forever, he gone. And he would keep going for he would keep going forever, except I think he just has to stop when he hits the edge of the screen. So he didn't just go ten blocks of thirty five that time. He went. He'll basically go an infinite number of blocks. He'll never stop. It's called an infinite loop, and it's a really bad thing because your program doesn't know when to end. In fact, it can never end. Um, you might even notice it a little better if I put in five steps. So now you'll notice that he goes way more than ten times. Watch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Like he's just he'll go on forever, right? It's just not moving quite as far every time. So you gotta be really careful with these forever loops because it literally will keep doing it forever and your and your program will never know when to stop. And usually what that ha what happens if you're doing that in uh, Reborg or if you're doing that in Python, which are both based on the Python language, it's gonna crash your computer. All right, so infinite loops are bad. It's just that Scratch is built in a way such that you can't really break it, okay? Um, actually, a good way to show how this never, never stops is if I use this number variable, and then I'm just going to change my number variable by one. Don't even need that. I'm gonna change my number variable by one every time the loop repeats and you'll see, okay, I'll stop it and I'll run it. You'll see, sorry, I gotta set it to zero at first. Okay, so watch number. Hmm, I should set my, oh, set my variable. I gotta set number to zero, not my variable. There we go. Okay, so if we run scratch now and I've just got, this number variable to keep track of how many times he does it. With the other two loops, we only did it 10 times. Okay, they both loops look different, but they did the same thing. Um, this one, it'll go on forever. So watch the number, it won't stop at 10 because we told it to do it forever. It's gonna go on forever. And eventually Scratch is gonna hit the edge of the screen. And I think the program will kind of stop him there, but I bet you this number just keeps going up. Come on, Scratchy. Get going, little kitty. Okay, so you notice it kind of stopped them. I think it does that just so you don't ever really lose scratch. You can kind of grab them and bring them back. But if you notice the number is still going up and that number will literally go on forever. Sooner or later, your computer's working memory, the RAM will fill up and it will crash your computer and it will it'd take forever to do it because it's not a particularly memory intensive program or anything. But the point is, if you don't physically go and stop this program by using this, it's gonna run forever and eventually it'll crash your computer. Not such a big deal if it's scratch, Pretty big deal if you're a Fortune 500 banking company. So just keep that in mind. Those are the basic ways that you can use looping and scratch. And uh, hopefully that helps you a little bit with your practice projects. Carry on.